Welcome to X-Men Evolution, episode 20 of Cyclops is Waiting for Me, an X-Men animated recap podcast. I got it right that time. I'm Rod. I'm very tired, but only mentally. I actually have a lot of physical energy right now, <laughs> even though I just try to play with Lucy, my cat, and wear her down so that she wouldn't get all rambunctious during this recording. And when this episode goes live, we are going to make sure that Rod posts the picture where his cat is giving him a death <laughs> stare because we were looking to see if her Christmas sweater was officially Funko licensed or not. We couldn't find it, but we did successfully piss off the cat. Yeah, it's kind of like when your mom, when you're a little kid, like looks for something in your clothes or something and you're just like, what are you doing, mom? Yeah, Lucy just gave Rod that look. And I am JC and I don't think I have anything to promote or anything like that. All I know is it's it's been a day already, so let's... Let's get through these through two recordings because we need to start stacking up a few episodes before the holiday. Yeah. So Cyclops is waiting for me as our weekly podcast series where we're going back and watching every single X-Men animated episode we could find, all with some bonus episodes. Our first series started out with the original 1992 X-Men, the animated series, which was building up to the release of X-Men 97, which we thought was coming to Disney Plus in 2023. And since it is November and we don't have a release date, we got to the end of Loki. There was no mysterious drop this week. And we got the release for Echo in February of 2024. I think it is safe to say that it is not happening this year. And since it's not, we had to fill in with some other shows. So we jumped over to X-Men Evolution. Yeah, and it also makes sense for them to drop it next year too. Because I think as of right now, Deadpool is the only Marvel movie coming out next year. That's like scheduled. Is it? I think it's the only, which is kind of cool. Everybody that I know in my circles has been kind of like, you know, it's kind of nice to have like a central thing. I think there's going to be other stuff like Craven the Hunter and things, you know, like adjacent stuff. That's, only, that's like, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. The only like MCU. Well, you know how it is now with multiverse branches and all that stuff. Sony's <laughs> not allowed in my multiverse. <laughs> yeah. But I, yeah, Deadpool is officially MCU and it's the only one actually slated for that year. And it's, it's slated for Comic-Con again. It is slated oh, for... Oh, release. Yes, it is the oh. Thursday of Comic-Con. That's going to be wild. It's very rude of them. And as of right now... Wait, are we bringing this up now? Yeah, let me... I'll go through this and then we'll bring up the next thing. Ah, quick fuck remi- it, bring it up, bring it up, fuck it. <laughs> well, fuck let's it. go into it. Some quick reminders. We recap show best series that started over 20 years ago. There will be spoilers. If you don't want spoilers for you, pause the podcast, watch the episode, and come back. We're currently not sponsored or affiliated with Marvel, Marvel Animation, Disney, or Disney Plus in any way. Also... As of recording this, SAG strike is over. So yeah, we're it is. Talk about a bunch of shit. I know there's a little controversy over the terms, so hopefully there's not a restrike or something. <laughs> but as of right now, everything's everything's good. The Marvels just came out. We're just going to tell you to skip to enter computerized voice. How long? <laughs> 18 minutes and 33 seconds. In the Marvels, which I know we both thought was a pretty okay movie. It like, was it was a solid B to me. To me, it was like on along the lines of like the Ant Man movies. You know, like. Far from the best, but not the worst by any means. I thought it was a lot of fun. I would not put it on. I would not put Quantum Mania on the same level as this. I know you didn't okay. have as many problems with Quantum Mania yeah. as I did, but I thought this was definitely better than Quantum Mania. I thought it was better than Quantum Mania. I thought it was better than Love and Thunder. I thought it was better than Multiverse of Madness. I thought that this was, it was a solid superhero story. I, I'm glad you say that because, like, for me, there's a lot of you know comic history that I don't have in things, and so. I, I guess I could see it being better in Quantum Mania because Quantum Mania, I feel like there's more to tell. But I, I guess I meant like for Ant Man movies, like just as like a whole, like when you're setting your expectations, I think it's like along those levels. It's not like the most crucial thing to know, but it's fun and everything kind of ties together. So that was that was a loaded character for me, which you know you you've talked about it, Rod. You've never read a comic with Kang in it ever. Yeah. So for me, as somebody who you know been buying books weekly since 2005 more than my share of avengers stuff and he's usually a pretty big cool moment when he pops into avengers comics him just being like the one who remains at the end of loki compared to the shitty joke of version that we got there i was offended but we're talking (laughs) about the marvels yeah and so of of course hopefully you watched ms marvel so you already know that kamala khan is kind of the first mutant that's identified well the first one is named a mutant i guess we technically had why can't I remember his name? Namor. <laughs> I had on tip my tongue. Who is also a mutant, you know, but Miss Marvel, like, she, she was called a mutant. They had the X-Men theme song play behind her and stuff. Not very subtle, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so if you stuck around for the mid credit scene, I... Which, why wouldn't you at this point? Right. Like, I still see, I still saw one person in my theater get up as soon as the credits started rolling. And I'm like, have you been to a Marvel movie in the past right. 12 years, 13 years? 
And I know people make fun of these kind of mid credits all the time, but I mean, I, I think it was genuinely exciting. The the audience I was with, we were on like the early Thursday showing in Burbank, you know. So there was probably half a new rock stars in the audience with me and stuff. The they, remaining half. Yeah, right. Well, some of them are still there part time. Anyway, we you know we see Monica waking up on the other side, other dimension or whatever, and we hear the you know someone's disembodied voice and then when the camera cuts over it's fucking beast like want that no like hints or nods no like as far as we know he doesn't die two seconds later you know like oh no (laughs) not well because like last thing we got was xavier but you know he was just he was literally Literally. just a cameo and i know he's a cameo and the beast is a cameo in this but it it genuinely felt like this was like an actual introduction and i hope they don't just like you know they don't continue this scene in whatever next movie they have and then yeah. he just dies or something. What's weird is when I messaged you about it, I thought it was a whole new character, actor, everything. And I looked up afterwards, and it was still voiced by Kelsey Grammer. Definitely not his likeness. But I don't know. That makes me worried now that this is just another, like, multiverse thing that they're just like, okay, this is a throwaway thing. But I don't know. It's, exci- it's exciting seeing the X-Men in the MCU now. Totally fair. Yeah. The part that I, I'm literally looking up and I'm, I'm a little upset with myself that I didn't check it out in advance is looking to see when Beast was an Avenger. He was on with Harold Danvers, but not at the same time as Monica Rambeau. Okay. So obviously, this is this is the, the mom there with her, but... It was, it, there wasn't the crossover of the time frame when Beast was an Avenger and when, whether you called her Captain Marvel, Photon, or Pulsar, they were not crossover with Pulsar. each other. Pulsar, I forgot about that name. Yeah, they, I mean, I'm pretty sure Kamala listed all the options off, so. Yeah, I wasn't f- familiar with Binary before, but I learned after the fact that she's a fairly new character. I know Captain Marvel goes Binary, but I guess Mon- Monica, Maria that we saw in the end credit uh, that mid credits was what? like the binary character yeah her like, her outfit had, was yeah yeah and i like this implication because after this in multiverse of madness it's kind of like carol is the odd one out and in every other multiverse or majority of the multiverses maria is captain marvel you know so it was like a fluke that in 616 or supposedly 616 you know carol ends up being captain marvel <laughs> it's all confusing yeah <laughs> But then I guess a little tie into Loki, hope, and you know, I, we already gave the spoiler. Yeah, we already gave a spoiler. So, so I love the way that it ended. And it's like it's kind of the best for everybody. Where it's like now there's, I feel like, and hopefully they go with this. There's no multiverse expectation, but there's an explanation. If that makes sense. So like all these movies have more freedom to do what they want without having to worry about tie-ins like hard tie-ins to other movies and stuff right but also now they don't have to spend every single movie which was arguably one of the big problems with phase four is like every movie had to address a multiverse to explain how things were happening and now with loki becoming i think he became a god of stories is what i saw sure yeah well yeah he's, he's literally holding the timelines and he got his i mean that that was probably one of the most like you know second to like tony or cap or whatever as far as villains definitely the best like kind of closing of a chapter even if we see him later like because he got the thing he wanted when we first met him you know a throne but it it was not what was it mobius said most purpose is more burden than glory (laughs) so he literally had one of the biggest burdens in the universe or the multiverse i mean it was it was kind of a a pseudo ripoff of the spider-man line i felt like oh really (laughs) oh oh oh. yeah Yeah. power of responsibility yeah i mean i guess that just kind of rings true with you know, just the superhero thing anyway. So with that, the, the tree thing happening and stuff, which I, I kind of addressed this, I think, on social media, but if anybody that knows me or if you see, saw me post this, I had mentioned, like, a decade ago, I wanted to get, like, this tattoo thing, and then, like, watching the Loki finale kind of cemented the idea. But I, I originally wanted, like, I have two right now. is one the cassette and one's, like, a slogan on my arm. The other thing I wanted, I want to get, like, a tree on part And there's of- the one we haven't told you about yet. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to get like kind of a tree that had like open branches so that if there were like big life events then I could like complete different branches with different things, you know? And I never really knew about it, but then I saw that imagery. I was like, yes, that, you know, like <laughs> that's yeah. it. And I, I also on that one wasn't even sure if that was supposed to have something to do with like the world tree, which was a whole thing in Norse mythology and stuff like that. So, Oh, is it the Idrisil yeah. tree? I, I've heard several people reference that and it would make sense 
for yeah. for Loki. But yeah, a lot of a lot of mutant news in but, the MCU. Yeah, and the, the the one other thing I was I wanted to add, I was I was shocked that Beast was the first of the original five we saw. Same. And but... I get I think it's probably because of how distinct the imagery is and, and stuff like that. It's like it's it's unmistakable. And I think to your point about everything in the, the phase needed to explain multiverse, explain multiverse, it was like this is just something that's easy for people to be like X Men. It's so quick and identifiable. I would say because we don't know who the casting is gonna be for the other ones and regardless of it being Kelsey Grammer's voice, they can easily switch out this beast because it was all CG. So it was like, cool, if we do this and it's on a whim, we don't have to have it be Kelsey Grammer or we can switch up other shit. But if you had a Jean, a Scott, an Angel, or a Bobby, you have, you, you're you like, cool, I'm committed to this person now. Yeah, and it, also most of those guys uh, wouldn't be as like immediately identifiable. Shy of... But. I was going to say, a really good Iceman, or you just get, like, the iconic classic version of Cyclops with the uniform, then maybe, like, whether it was, you know, the, the, the Jim Lee era or the, the Joss Whedon era for Astonishing, mm -hmm. like, those two outfits are like, okay, cool, that's Cyclops, but, yeah, I mean, we've, we've run through a yeah. few, we've run through a few Scots, we've run through a few Jeans so far, so... I think and, they made the right call with Beast. And ain't nobody want to see Cyclops be the first <laughs> X-Men. But also, they probably haven't casted them yet, right? Because... Oh, I bet they have not. Yeah. Because, you know, the Marvels, even though it filmed a couple of years ago, that mid-credit probably wasn't done until, like, very recently. And the last, like, the half of this year has been, you know, no promo strikes, no casting, no... Yeah, no shooting, anything, anything. yeah. So, yeah, all, all the pieces the make sense. You know, yeah, like you said, Beast is most identifiable immediately, and they can see... I don't know what the rules are for that stuff, but it feels like it's easier to have a CG character than try to really quickly film Bill. a person in the middle of a strike or something, or in between the margins. Well, I mean, yeah, if you tried to film him during... Whatever, whatever they did had to be done, like, at least his VO recorded and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. It was it was really cool, and I still I like the movie. I, if anything, I felt like the movie was a little bit rushed, but that was the trade off for it not being like four fucking hours long or something. You know, mm -hmm. I actually appreciate like a short superhero movie. It's just yeah. nice and sweet. And then there was your favorite part. It's not mutant related, but <laughs> it's definitely not mutant related. I mean, honestly, it was a it was a creative choice. I didn't agree with the creative choice. I thought it was kind of corny to do the the. Yeah planet of dancing just in song it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> basically that, a musical planet <laughs> but it's like that took it from being a b plus to a b to me it was just yeah. it didn't feel like it meant anything like why is the water planet the fucking singing planet like there was just a total disconnect and it was there for the sake of it i think i've said this online to a few people i also don't like and this goes for the cree too this is not just singing planet mm -hmm. i don't like when alien species look like humanoids in just different clothes oh yeah yeah yeah. like like kree everybody's fucking blue sure yeah. cool with that but if it's like this is an alien species and everybody is just different races of human that doesn't make sense to me and it's just a yeah. clothing change it's like well then why the fuck are we on an alien planet <laughs> and and that that to the quantum mania's credit that's one of the things they did really well is they had like a whole like star trek star wars like like <sighs> variety of different you know species yeah. and they, they had like buildings that were alive and stuff my favorite i think i saw either eric voss or mod garrett talk about this i guess that planet in the comics they only spoke in rhymes mm. and so someone made a creative decision to make it a full-on musical in the movie you um, know what else is a bad idea a planet that only speaks in rhymes right <laughs> and mod actually Please. she didn't like it either and she said that her read and this is not from anything official this is just her read she said she felt Dope. like some studio note was like girls like princes and princesses and singing and she's like but we don't always need that so i don't know if that was actually the thought but that's what she got when she was watching it and i was like i guess i can kind of see that i did appreciate... i mean that 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 is what most trolls online have been saying right. too so i think that's actually one of the times where it was unfor <laughs> unfortunately i think they did probably get that right so yeah and it was but was nice was seeing uh, i forget his last name but his first name is park or his surname is part of the Korean actor in there. I think he it, might be the it, most famous person in the MCU. 
if he <laughs> if he didn't have to sing, I would have liked his character. Right. It it also kind of did him a little disservice because it, his accent came really through the singing, and I'm not sure if like a lot of Western audiences were going to be kind about that. You know. I um, think the whole scene is so fucked that that's the least of their concerns. <laughs> right. Also, but... Florkin eggs. Michelle Waffle posted the egg earlier, and I didn't realize it was an egg. It just looked like she was holding a fucking brain in her oh, hand. I didn't think about that. Yeah, I saw that too. Yeah, and I was like, what the fuck are you holding? I was, she was, and she, I was like, that's gross. And she's like, it's a cute, it's cuter inside. I'm like, that's still gross. And then I saw oh. it that night. I was like, oh, it's still gross. That, that was, was a hilarious a- plot point, though. Of like, just especially because it was like Barbara Streisand dancing in the cat song, and then just all those. They're basically interns, right? They're running around that. No, uh, those are full fledged scientists, dude. Well, some of them were, but weren't a lot of them cadets? I mean, so, I like, think if if you're literally creating the brand new space station that's yeah. only been around for however long secret evasion happened which uh-huh. i think we've also established was supposed to be swapped in terms of timing originally it feels that way because he doesn't seem like a guy that just came back from all the secret invasion stuff yeah even if you like secret invasion it doesn't seem like he came back from all that but i, I think that was a hilarious scene it was kind of like like, like of I'll, all the things in the movie that were like you said it was like a strong superhero story it was like pretty i said numbers. it was a, i said it was good superhero story i didn't yeah. say strong oh, okay. yeah. well, no, and, and the reason why i separate that is if you look at most comic books most comics are good you have mm-hmm. a few that are phenomenal you have a bunch in the middle that are good and you have a few that are trash so <laughs> you know this this was like this could have been a five issue run of the captain marvel comic and that's oh, fine yeah. that's all it needs to be you get the people who go, you give them a character story, you get some development out of it, or a big cliffhanger at the end, and I think we got both, and that's fine. It doesn't need to be, not everything is going to be, you know, a Dark Knight Returns. So Yeah, yeah. It, but what I was going to say was, like, the, the movie didn't have a whole lot of, like, plot twists or anything. So, like, there wasn't, besides the mid-credits, there wasn't, and, like, the sting at the end wasn't, like, a lot of super spoilery stuff, but the Florkins and the cadets were hilarious. That was that was the unexpected thing. <laughs> I think that was hilarious, just rescuing everybody that way, but... Oh, and then, there was a part for you at the end, I think, that hopefully made up for it, where you see Kamala recruit Kate Bishop. Oh, that so was, that was, that was, cool. that was a good John moment, so... And, and it was, like, to me, it makes sense after the fact, but was, to me, was, like, that was also kind of unexpected. I was like, like, I didn't I... expect to see... I saw the pizza... You'll be proud of me. I saw Pizza Dog, and I was like, oh, there's a, either a yeah. Kate or Clint tie-in right now. Well, I knew it wasn't going to be Clint, because he's he's not under any additional contracts at this point, so... Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. But, but, we know, knew, but we cool. knew she was booked for multiple appearances after, so... Right. And then Kamala, or Iman Vellani, is living all our dreams. She's like the Marvel fan that made it into the MCU, so she gets to do the Nick Fury speech. It's really cool. I think by the time this episode comes out or no it might be i'll i'll post online but she is doing a signing of her ms marvel comics at a spot collector's paradise i believe is the store in burbank or glendale i'll share it on her okay. instagram if it oh, if oh. it hasn't already happened if it has i hope you went and enjoyed it whoever is listening to this she's but, so nice i got to sit at a table with her at critics choice or it was asian oscars whatever it was and she was great she was really nice took a photo with me and stuff and she held the secret she had filmed her Marvel stuff at that point didn't people word at that time. So she's Probably. the opposite of Tom Holland with <laughs> right? that kind of stuff. Got it. Yeah. Anyway, on that note, we're here for an X Men cartoon. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Cyclops I W F M Pod on Instagram, TikTok, Threads, Twitter because I refuse to call mm-hmm. X and Facebook. Even though I think Rod is not even posting on, I feel weird saying it on Twitter. You haven't logged in in forever, or have you like popped in to see if there's been an earthquake in LA? I haven't logged in since. I don't know, like months, and then uh, when I upgraded my iPhone, I like I didn't even update the app. Like it's still like just sitting. It has the new logo on it, but right. it like it doesn't have the login for me yet because I just I don't know. It's just it seems like such a mess. It's and, cr- it was already like not great anyway. So. <laughs> and of course, make sure to follow us on all your podcast services in case you somehow found this or a clip on YouTube and that that's how you're here. But yeah, following us on the podcast services is great. Rating us on them is even better. And I also throw a comment, question, not, that's not the right word. <laughs> there, it's not, I'm not using the polls, but I'm using like the survey tool at the end of it of just like, hey, open up, tell us stuff and we'll talk about it. I think that only works on Spotify though for what that's worth. That makes so. sense because we're using like a Spotify like distributor. <laughs> yeah, it was a thing that was not called Spotify 
that was powered by Spotify, and then they fully took it over, and then it became Spotify for podcasters. So yep. everything's becoming one giant company. That's the joke I think that Toy Galaxy uses when he talks about Hasbro. Oh, really? <laughs> because it talks about all these toy lines that have been around for you know decades, and then at some point, usually in the mid like 2010s, that toy line got acquired by Hasbro. Oh, so his true. big his big joke is until all are one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Transformers. I know that one. Oh, also, to anybody listening, I don't think you're going to hear it, but hopefully you don't. Either my landlord or one of my neighbors has a dying battery in their smoke alarm, and I'm getting ready to murder someone on this block. Do it. I've gone to everyone, and none of them will fess up. But whatever it is, it's in some place that is echoing throughout this block. I can hear it at the end of the block. I can hear it at my house. I don't, I don't. I don't know how that thing in smoke alarms is the loudest fucking thing that pierces through dude i get anxiety when i'm like scrolling through instagram reels mm. and somebody's audio <laughs> has that in it because yeah. every now and then it happens usually it's like drunk kid who's like drop kicking an oven at 3 45 in the morning but then the smoke alarm goes off and i'm just like that that little tweak i'm like yeah. i hate it i hate it like i mean i if i ever come home from work and i hear it happen I will literally stop everything I'm doing and search for which of the smoke detectors is having that issue because it yeah. will drive me insane. It, and it has been because, like, especially once you fixate on it, I can't like let it go. And this has been almost a week now. And also, also my living is I record music at home. It's, it's great. I think in the city of Los Angeles, that is no longer considered a felony if you kill okay. that person. I think it's just <laughs> yeah. a misdemeanor. Okay. Very cool. If it, anyway. if, it, if it interferes with you making entertainment, we yeah. make exceptions here. There you go. Now this on... is not legal advice. Please do not actually murder somebody <laughs> and say that our podcast said it was okay. Now onto the show. Today we're going to be talking about Season 2, Episode 7, titled African Storm. It aired November 17th, 2001, and currently sits at a 6.2 star rating on IMDb. P.S. almost 26 minutes into the episode. Right. And this is a fitting episode for me to head up because Storm is my, my favorite, favorite character. I didn't realize, I mean, I should have because of how these episodes have gone, when this aired, because I think this specifically, we'll talk about next episode. The next episode, I noticed something. I was like, that's odd timing. This makes it even weirder. Something else I noticed in this episode that was confirmed in the next one, the character I never noticed was Jubilee. Yeah, you finally got it. <laughs> Mostly because she was more full frame, and I was like, oh, that's an Asian girl in a yellow jacket. <laughs> yes. Okay. And, and that's this- why... In the last episode where I talked about the sound effect. The fireworks. It was it was literally the same sound effect that she had for her fireworks in 92. That makes sense. Yep. Yeah. And so it also, now in hindsight, it's kind of like in uh, Sixth Sense, you know, where after you know the twist, you go back and you see all the stuff in the movie. Yeah. Like, I remember now, now, like, once on this podcast saying, like, oh, and they always leave Jubilee out. And you just, like. I said nothing. No. <laughs> yep. So one thing, I, before we get into the episode itself, quick point out. If you go by the IMDb and the Disney Plus order, we are going in the right order. But there is a disconnect between that and what is appearing on the fandom wikis as well as Wikipedia, where this is being listed as the eighth episode of the season. Another one, which we will be recording in two weeks, is listed as the seventh. And I think whether it's a script order or whatever it is, because Stephen Gordon told us he was every third episode. He is the next episode, so that means there is some sort of order swapping going on. Interesting. Yeah, you mentioned that after I watched that. I usually do check our spreadsheet, but today I was so fried from everything I was doing. Thank God you didn't, and you just opened up Disney. (laughs) Yeah, I just opened up Disney and watched everything. Otherwise, you would have had to watch an extra episode (laughs) to to get back on. Yeah. But watching these two episodes, I guess there is some amount of interchangeability between them, because there seems to be like season wide storylines but right. not necessarily like episode to episode things so it might have been more forgiving that's at the time and i think that actually falls in well with what we were talking about with steven about the <laughs> buffy style inspiration is mm. buffy would sometimes have like what we would refer to as monster of the week and there were certain things that would carry over from episode to episode but in the middle you get to these like little like bottle points it didn't matter if it happened in episode six, seven, or eight, as long as the things happened. You know, what would be interesting is when Steven said he did every third episode, it'd be interesting if internally with the writers, they just made sure that every three cluster of episodes, like kind of had beats they, to it. If, yeah. yeah. If they referred to each other, it was within that cluster. So they could like kind of interchange. That would be a nice way to give themselves some margins. Well, but... I'll do some research and find us a fucking writer, Rod. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so this episode opens up 
on an African tribe uh, doing some sort of like ritual yeah, or ceremony. I don't know if I can. I don't have the authority to vouch on how authentic this is, but for 2001 cartoon, not bad. There were snake idols or statues, whatever mm-hmm. those were. And I will say to jump ahead slightly, there was the character, I'm pulling up the name, the Hungan. Hungan, yeah. Yes. Who I did look, it was not solely a part of the show. But the Hungan was known as a witch doctor within voodoo. Okay, cool. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, could, I made a note here that he was at least the leader. I didn't know what the official like title was for him. I, he had the skull painted on his face. But, and also when they named him later, I was like, yeah. that's too specific not to be an existing character. <laughs> well, the, the, I, and sorry, I'm referring to that title of in in oh, tribal oh, in, culture. In like real life. Not, oh, yeah, okay. not, not saying a Marvel character. That is, oh, that is a okay. title within the tribal structure is is at least what I was able to glean from the Wikipedia research and stuff like that that had nothing to do with the expert. So. Okay, and then this tribe, they named themselves, I'm going to butcher this name. Batantu. Bon, 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 yeah, Batantu. Okay, you said it. <laughs> Batantu, which Batantu. I did not find anything about them. Like, there were a few autocompletes, so I think it may be a, a word that has meaning within a certain language because I did see it pop up. But there was nothing outside of reference to X-Men. They, it may be inspired by the Bantu tribe, B-A-N-T-U, which that one was what the autocomplete kept trying to show me results for. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah but, I, but I, I don't know enough about tribal culture to be able to speak with any level of authority about that. That's just yeah. what we were able to find. And also in this show, you know, like New York is kind of this conglomeration of like both on the coast and in the city and all this stuff. And so this, you know, even the Hungan says like he's going to take over Africa like as if it's like one small island is and not like the largest continent yeah, on earth. You know? He says so that the- they have found the Wind Rider. Uh, they don't extrapolate exactly how, if it's mystically or they did it, you know, through research, but he said 10 seasons. And I wasn't quite sure if that was 10 years or... So I went back and checked on that because okay. at some point later on, they do mention 10 years. So it's, mm-hmm. yes, he was interpreting season as one calendar year is how that went through. The other part that I think I pointed it out when we were having the fight between Storm and Mystique in the season one finale, mm-hmm. where she referred to her as the Wind Rider yeah. and... I had mentioned that was something she had been called in the comics. Here was somebody from the tribal culture that was calling her that. You know, that just connected something for me that I think we were supposed to, like, interpret from it, but they didn't outright say it, that Mystique had something to do with all this. I did not get that at all, but... Well, when, when we get to it, I'll bring it up, but I, di- I didn't think about that until just now, especially because of the Oh, shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, Yo, you, no, you're, yeah, you're, no, you're, you're, now, you're, yeah, no, now, yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Let's okay, get. Let's keep sense. going. They were burning a statue of her in I'm effigy. Sure. Yep. Yeah, because yeah, he. They later revealed that there was a statue that, of him. I guess it was the snake statues oh, earlier. Okay. So he and was they, like bringing those back in okay. getting rid of her. Yeah, and then they wanted to really like make it apparent that it was her, and so they like actually faded to like a photo of her <laughs> in in the thing, and then the credits rolled. It was the same as it usually is. And it opens up. Yeah, I'm curious if it switches in like season three or four. Probably, yeah. If. It opens up at the school. I, I I don't know if this was just a different angle. I thought it was a mansion at first. I thought that too. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not crazy. I did yeah. think it was the front of the mansion too. There was something about the sh- the structure, and then I, like I immediately realized because you see Gene walking out with a cafeteria tray. Yeah. They were at the school. Okay, I'm not I, crazy. Okay. And I actually rewound to see if it was like an error. error. I was like, no, I guess that could be a school. But yeah, it was just a weird angle. It kind of looked it had that like the White House set up, you know, with like the big yeah. middle section and the two side sections. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Jean's this is essentially a scene out of Mean Girls. Jean's looking for a seat at lunch and she sees Taryn and Scott, so she tries to dodge him by turning around, but Taryn rec- sees them. She seems the way they play her, she seems to be genuine, like she's not trying to be mean. Scott is. I don't know if he is. I think he's oh, okay. enjoying it, but I don't think he's like oh, trying to be like I mean. Yeah. I think it's like, oh, that's like I, I wanna show her that I don't need her, but I yeah. don't think it was a rubber in the rub it in her face. Not a it, rubber in her face. That's yeah, a very different that's later. And then <laughs> and then Gene tells Terrence and Scott that she has to go find find Fine. Duncan, which we never find out where he is. I, I guess we're trying to get we're supposed to get the impression that he's kind of a douche anyway. But then there's like this long, awkward pause. It's like a <laughs> five second pause. Of just like nobody knows what to do or say, and she's like, "Ah, cool, I'm out." Yeah, yeah, that was my note too. It was like awkward encounter, and that was the only line of the note. But I, I guess 
if I remember high school right, most of us, at least my school, we had like our regular tables and stuff. But I guess if there was a scenario where like someone wasn't there or the group got broken up somehow, then Dead. and you had to like search for a new group, there there would be like those awkward like you sit down, you think you're welcome, then you suddenly realize you're not. Well, it also got nice enough outside that they're or they're eating outside instead of inside the cafeteria too. Oh yeah, because remember the the cafeteria that Blob destroyed was an inside cafeteria. Oh, that's right. I grew up in indiana yeah. so we never had nice enough weather to eat outside same thing <laughs> we're always inside so as she's getting up spike goes by on his skateboard grabs something off of her track and i just have to point this out because i don't think i realized it until this episode for a kid who is very rebellious and doesn't seem to give a shit about a lot of things he always has full pads and helmet on anytime he is on the skateboard <laughs> And that has to be something with, network you know, sensors. The, the, the network's standards and practices, because there's no way that character would do it if they didn't require it from standards and practices. That, yeah, that does it as track. Because, yeah, especially that, I don't know if it's still like this, because like I said, I haven't like had to raise kids or anything, but I remember as a kid, on you know, there's things like, that they even though they're fighting aliens and all this shit and stuff like but we got to be safe when we're on skateboards because that's something a real kid would do the thing <laughs> most likely for a kid to be able to replicate from the mutant show yes yeah and i had a I, maybe i think i interpreted the animation right but when i went and looked at it, it looked like he stole a roll which is kind of a lame thing for you to steal if you're going to take anything off a tree but maybe that was the only edible thing from the school cafeteria. it was i think it was just whatever he could grab as he was going yeah. by you know yeah and gene is spiteful and she <laughs> telekinetically trips him and he goes across an entire table full of people. And then we see Principal Kelly, who doesn't even say anything in this episode. Oh, I want to know so much more about Principal Kelly. And we get nothing for most of the season, I feel like. Yeah, they didn't want to pay that voice actor this time. You, you assume that Evan, Evan got, got, you know, yeah. detention or something or whatever. Because yeah. Storm finds out about it later. And then at the mansion, Storm is pacing in the danger room. This was a little bit confusing, but it makes sense later. You, you think she's... I thought she was there because she was, like, contemplating something because she was hearing voices, or you hear voices in there. But then you quickly find out when Evan gets in there that she was actually waiting on him for danger room practice. One thing that does stand out is, as they show back at the mansion, the mansion is surrounded by fog. Oh, yeah. I forgot yeah. to write that note down. At first, I didn't think it was that important, and then there just kept being fog. Yeah. And it was very purposeful. Yeah, so that was that was, like the transition because we saw there was not fog around the kids when they were having lunch. So oh, something oh, yeah, something like... happened between noon and let's call it four o'clock that afternoon. That is weird because even on like the coast, if it was gonna get foggy it'd probably be at the ends of the days, right? Either early or later, not necessarily in the middle. Yeah, like you get towards <laughs> like a, a twilight or you know, yeah, it was it felt like a weird time for fog to pop up. Yeah. And so Evan gets there late, storms, you know, a little She's upset. pissed. Yeah, yeah. It, because I'm guessing he was substantially late because he was probably in detention. Which, let's flash back to when we were in school. If that happened, you weren't calling anybody. Like, you you oh, were, yeah. you, like, if, and especially somebody who isn't, like, getting picked up by their parents. And obviously, he's probably like, I either ride back to Cyclops or I skateboard home, which we've seen him do in the past. So it's like, you don't call to say you're coming home late. You just come home late from being in detention. So yeah. you're you're getting in trouble twice. You're getting in trouble yeah. for being in detention, and then for not calling. I didn't think about that. Yeah, because there was it, it, the the best case scenario is there's a payphone at the school, but that's assuming you have change, but also you have time between when you got in trouble and going there. You probably not. And that was also man weird thing about the '90s or I guess early 2000s. 2000s, like, yeah. The teachers wouldn't necessarily care that you contacted your parents. You know, you just be like, you're in trouble. Get in yeah. detention. <laughs> oh, oh! you have a ride you have to catch? Get in detention, yeah. I don't care. No, I specifically remember part of the punishment of detention is if you were, like, in sports or show choir or something or anything extracurricular, you just missed it. Like, that was the punishment. If you got detention, you missed football practice. Or right, and then you got screened at by your coach or whoever. Yeah. yeah. So the storm's like, oh, well, all right, well, we better get to it. So she asked the danger room to start the storm catcher sequence, which... Evan was like, I forgot. Do I have to catch you? I was like, you know what? That's a fair assessment, you know, for that title. And she's like, no, you have to protect me. And they basically, like, did, like, the Tron setup. Yes, that's exactly how I felt. It was the Tron grid popping up. I got the feeling that this was, like, a super beginning level setup because we've seen some of the more advanced stuff where it's, like, you can't even distinguish it from reality. And this was, like, clearly, like, a simulated setup and stuff. And it looked like it was going to be an open hallway because she was like, get me from here to there without being injured. And I don't know what adult would agree to that from a teenager. Holy cow. Even with superpowers. <laughs> I would I would say it's the adult that could defend themselves. 
yeah. and is in the program that is in the non-lethal mode. Okay. Yeah. Like, we don't know. Like, maybe, like, the ends of the spikes are rubber-tipped or something like that, you yeah. know? I guess even just the way she got captured at first, you know, with the the mechanical arms and stuff, I was like, man, I could break her ankle or a leg or something. Like, I wouldn't want that either, you know? I'm going to chalk that up to Professor X's contractors who are now dead <laughs> were really really good at understanding like the tensile strength of people yeah. so those things don't pull beyond like it's like a ufc fighter like if they want to they could break the other dude's arm but they mm -hmm. go just to the point before they break the arm if that scene was in the boys it would just be a person like all the limbs like fly off i'm trying to think of how many scenes in the boys or invincible have had that happen at this point right. basically spike is doing okay but then he gets too cocky and there was there, there ends up being like fog in it so this is the foreshadowing from earlier with the fog like well he, he actually he breaks he, away the mechanical arms of the spikes right. and, and then, then he drops down into the ground mm -hmm. in because there's a trap door and then he used his spikes in a creative way he actually made yeah. himself like a ladder to climb up using his spikes yeah, that, so that was, like, he seemed to be doing well. Then there was the fog, and, you know, he was like, oh, Anio, I can't see you. And she's like, use sound. And it's like, that seemed pretty self-explanatory, like, follow, follow the sound of her voice. But he just wasn't, like, clicking with it. And then she gets, like, enveloped in a box. And my, like, gut reaction is, like, you know, anybody that knows Storm is, like, one of her, like, core personality traits is she's claustrophobic. And I don't think, I think every iteration of her has kept that, you know. And I was, my first reaction was, like, why would they build that into the, <laughs> the danger? I understand if she was training, maybe. Yeah, you know, like, how want... do I get through it, get out yeah. of it, avoid it type shit? But, yeah, it being there was kind of fun. Yeah, and I was like, well, this is for him. It's not for you. And then, he, you know, she's like, get me out of here. She, she was, like, not playing. And he started trying, but then she ended up just shorting out the, the whole program and getting pissed. And Yeah, because she breaks herself out. And I, mm -hmm. I would imagine there was some sort of safeguard that if anyone outside of evan uses their powers it's an end simulation scenario oh that's a good point yeah i just figured she just like you know lightning is like just short everything like shut everything down and she was up you know rightfully upset with him and he was like don't blame me i didn't you know set off the box and she's like i didn't either and then things get really sus yeah so she throws him out because you know she's like facing her like biggest ptsd and he's a teenager so <laughs> like she tosses him out and he leaves and so storm she looks up at the center overhead room. That's yeah. like her instinct. It's like, I need to check the spot where Xavier usually sits and tortures us. And so she walks up there, and then you just see the horror movie trope of like the shadow running behind her, every, just out of her field of vision every time. Yeah. And I think there might have even been that whispering noise again. And what was funny, my, the whole progression of my thoughts with, for this ended up being right. right. Because I, I, there's this joke amongst like all my friends and anybody I know that's like an immigrant kid in the States and stuff. None of us go to the dark room or the basement in a haunted house or follow a shadow. And so she's like, oh, curious. And she starts following him, the, the, the sound or whatever. I'm like, that wouldn't happen. I think she sees the shadow or she sees it in her peripheral. And she's like, nope. She turns around, tries to get the elevator. I'm like, ah, there it is. That is fucking survival instinct is <laughs> yeah, to yeah. get out of there. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And so she's doing it and it's not work. Well, it seems like it's not working. I think then... that was like kind of that like build tension anxiety yeah. of like, oh, no. It's an elevator in a, in a house. It just goes a little slower. Yeah, and, well, oh, also, before, she tried to flip the light on, and that didn't work, so it kind of yes. gave this impression that maybe the power's out. But we find out the reason that it was a little slow is because Beast was actually coming up. So it was probably, like, waiting on him or something to get in, and then he scares her, not because of him. He thinks it's because of him, because he's like, oh, I get this a lot now. But it was like she's like, no, nah, I've just been jumpy because, you know, it's just been weird. Yeah, she's like, yeah, Evan's stressing me out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, she like... deflected it onto Evan. I kind of get that, though, because, like, she basically became the mother, you know? So I always say, like, I'm, what's the acronym, punk? Perfect uncle, no kids? Yeah. But, like, I don't know how it would be as a dad. Like, if I just suddenly became a dad of a teenager, I'd probably be stressed like that hearing voices, too, you know? <laughs> and Sure. And so... Beast is, like, disappointed because he's like, yeah, I thought we were getting through to him. And he's like, yeah, about Evan. And he hands the progress report from school, which he found in the trash, which... I, why was he going through the trash? I never understand that trope in, in TV. Like, okay. how many people are going through the trash to find a crumpled up piece of paper? Especially, you know, not to get too gross, especially in, like, a teenage boy's trash. I'm going to assume it was just in, like, one of the main living okay. spaces. <laughs> I specifically remember because, like, one of my friends, like, I was visiting them a couple of years ago, yep. and he's a teenager. And I forget why, but they were like, oh, they had one of those. You should go look in the trash. They're like, nope. Nope. Hard, hard pass. I was a I'm teenager good. once. 
Not gonna do that. If, if anything, say. I'm just gonna drop a match in it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So totally. Storm says she has doubts that he's reachable, which is super harsh, even in private, to say. Yeah. Because you know, once again, I, I wouldn't be able to deal with it, but he's still he's a teenager. I'm like that's. Just... And it's her flesh and blood too. Like I get, <laughs> I get Beast or even like Scott. Mm, I don't know. It's like this is her nephew. Yeah, and I guess this is I... just kind of fresh off her getting you know trapped and. Yeah. box and everything and maybe there's like part of it in who knows maybe if there are episodes that are out of order slightly if the one that we're gonna like broadcast in two weeks mm -hmm. he does fuck around and put people in danger maybe then that makes a little more sense but like mm, yes, i feel right. like aside from him cutting class with the whole beast episode he hasn't hasn't fucked up that much has he yeah and he hasn't been worse than like boom boom or something you know I mean, it's very hard to be worse than Boom Boom. <laughs> Cuts to outside the mansion, and Risty is dropping off Rogue. Now that we know Risty is Mystique, it makes sense that they're, like, just, at least on Risty's part, like, kind of friends. But that, so, this is what I connected earlier. So when Rogue is by herself, after Risty leaves, she hears the voices. Was Mystique, like, the informant? That's probably what it was to the to that tribe. Yeah, I I did not think about that in... in going through but it totally makes sense and then also talking about who went in and programmed the danger room to yeah. trap storm originally it was like well how would these the the people from this tribe be able to do that because there's no technology shown around them but it would make sense that if she had figured out a way to get access into the computers from all the shit she downloaded oh that's right because she has the dvd yeah <laughs> Which, which she, in a, a little bit later part, mentions the claustrophobia. So it's like she knows yeah. about Storm's claustrophobia. So it would make sense that she could be the one who actually fucked with Storm this way. Yeah, and or at the very least gave the tribe like the intel to like how to get past all the defenses. Yeah. Even just like get close enough. Because otherwise, if she hadn't just it's dropped off Rogue, I would assume that she was the one that started it. Yes, agreed. But yeah, so that, that's interesting that's thinking about it in real time. And, and the Rogue is like, that's weird. And it actually shows Rogue locking the door, setting the alarm. <laughs> and because we hunt for Easter eggs in this show, and apparently this show has nowhere near as many as 92 because there was not a Larry Houston on, on this team. X-Men 537, which the code was 537, oh, okay. did not come out until about a decade later. So, so no, so it had nothing to do with it. Some animator's pin number. Then we fast forward to later in the mm. night. Storm is asleep. We're assuming it's kind of late. She's having like night terrors. And which, 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 them. real quick, aside from Rogue locking it, did it feel like that was a throwaway? Like, yeah, it didn't ever come back. Or just to put Risty mm. into two scenes in the episode to, to make her like a reminder of who she is? Because like Rogue hearing the sh like the whispers didn't feel like enough of a reason for that scene for me oh you think that she did it in response to hearing the voices that makes sense yeah or like we what we're gonna hear in the conversation with Risty and, and Rogue in a few minutes where she's like yeah she's been like on my back and blah 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 and it's like was there a scene that was or or was it too long and they had to cut something for time and there was like an awkward interaction between Rogue and Storm in the in the the lobby area or something because mm, gotcha. yeah it just it, it felt extra and not yeah. in the same way that there was, like, the subplot in the last episode with Nightcrawler and, like, the, the body swap stuff. Like, this was just, like, I don't know why that shot was there. So Yeah, yeah. I could see, like you said, them just reminding us Risty's there, who she is. But the extra part about, like, setting the alarm and locking the door and stuff, that did seem like it came for it was a remnant of something else yeah because they never really come back to it yeah the storm is sleeping that night and she's having like these night terrors but you see like shadows like envelop her so there's clearly like people surrounding yeah, her and it didn't look yeah, symbolic you know in the right way of, like at first i thought it was going to be like shadow king or something and i don't know if the hungan is like an allusion to that so i this, think it's separate version. but storm says it says it a little bit later that like it was actually like a physical presence and so she wakes up screaming and you know same thing happens anytime somebody wakes up screaming in the house. Everyone comes running in. Like, Wolverine's the first one there. I would have thought that he would have smelled nope. something, but maybe he just kind of, like, let that slide for right. storyline's sake. Katie also, I'll shout out to the Marvel Evolution Wiki, who theorized that this is a signal that they're in some sort of a relationship because he's the first to run into her room with no hesitation, which I don't agree with, but I thought it was an interesting remark on their part. 
I would like that. The Logan and the Storm in the main timeline of X Men '92 seemed like, you know, peers, but it didn't necessarily like seem like you know in a relationship. Yeah. These two, from the little we know about them, I think I like that relationship. If that is even a little bit true, and it also makes sense that they were the only other adults besides Charles. For yeah. Ten years. <laughs> you get to know somebody. You know. Right. They both have like horribly traumatic backgrounds, and you know, both kind of gods in their own way. I know, like. Storm kind of literally was, but Wolverine had like lived through most of American history, and so about the start of it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, everybody runs in. I think Kitty also comes in, and then Xavier comes in last. Xavier Maybe? gets there pretty quick. I'm assuming he's just up anyway. I don't whatever. think that dude sleeps. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know Wolverine. Actually, now that you say that someone mentioned they might be in a relationship, it makes sense because he. He does the full scout. Like, he walks out to the balcony, like, checks things out. So, one of the reasons that, like, I mentioned I thought the setting alarm was kind of weird because the very next scene is, like, the windows open. So, what does the setting alarm do in a house like that, you know? Front door. Yeah, I mean, it was the front door, but this is, like, a mansion where, like, it's, like, high security. There's, like, literally, like, you know, turrets and stuff around. So, like, an open window kind of... Ne- Anybody trying to get into the house probably won't be coming through the front door. Fair. <laughs> I don't know. The air circulation is trash, and it gets hot at night, and they need to yeah. open the window, like... You can't wake up the entire institute every time somebody's hot. So yeah, no, I get I get that. I just like it. Just that's why like setting the alarm. If that wasn't there, it's just it, weird. It, yeah. it happened back to back. Wolverine can't find anybody. Xavier attributes it to what's going on with Evan as Wolverine and Kitty have have gone out. And Xavier jumps right to maybe we made a mistake with him. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Again, I don't think he's fucked up that bad. And if he has, they haven't shown it to us. Yeah, I think either they're just expecting us to believe through this exposition that he's caused a lot of trouble, or, yeah, we're going to see an out-of-order episode where he did something worse than it was just a teenager. That was kind of annoying. He, he's, yeah, he's like, maybe we should call his mother. You know, you know, we're both thinking. Well, I guess he's psychic, so he's like, I know what you're thinking, and I agree. And, and we know this Xavier has no problem reading people's mind without asking right. for permission. <laughs> yeah. and He uh, actually implanted that idea in Storm's head. Oh, you know, that would be interesting. Man, that would be interesting. That would be fucked. <laughs> what if Xavier's like the big villain of this series and like Magneto's actually the good guy? He's like, I was trying to save you kids from this madman. Yeah, Magneto uh, is right. Yeah. Evan's outside the room and overhears it, which is very plausible. So that's what more surprising that Xavier would be speaking so openly about it because, you know, like we said in the mansion, anytime someone has like a, a situation, everybody like gathers there. So it's yeah. not out of the realm of possibility for him to run over. Well, especially when there was like a panic and Wolverine and Kitty are running by. Yeah. And as his aunt. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so he overhears it and, you know, that maybe, maybe they think he's just such a shitty teammate that it's like, oh, he's not going to come here. So it's fine. <laughs> You could talk openly about how much he sucks. Or they don't care. That would be worse. That would be way worse. In the morning, Storm is drawing a bath, which, yes, Queen, because I I don't know. For whatever reason, maybe it's just the way I was brought up. Like, in my head, it's hardwired. Like, showers are morning things and can be night things. But I don't know how many people take baths to start their day. You know, like, I usually think of it as, like, an unwinding. I have lived in this house for five years, and I have not taken a bath at it once, so. Man, if I had a tub. Because I just have a shower in my place. I would at least once a week just chill. Because every once in a while when, like, a client sends me to, like, a not even a fancy hotel. Just any motel that has, like, a clean tub. I'll soak in that shit and I'll have, like, the best sleep in a long time. I bought I two it. bath bombs that have not been used yet. So. Ooh, nice. Yeah, she's drawing the bath and she grabs something out. But it's a glass bottle, which <laughs> was a choice because, you know, usually... You get shampoo or bubble bath or whatever it is, and it's, it's in a plastic bottle because otherwise shit breaks. She closes the mirror, and the skull from the dude's face is on it, and then she drops a glass bottle. And like, again, why does she have a fucking glass bottle? Like, I, you, I guess. You know it's, some, you know it's something. Something just, fucking expensive. Yeah, it's like gold-infused oil. Or something. I don't even know if that's a real thing, but it's just something. It's like shit that Gold-infused like oil. It's, it's always something that doesn't sound like it makes sense or you don't know that exists until you run into that auntie i've had aunties like that we're like what is that and they'll say something random you know it's like oh it's this like bee pollen from central africa something something get rid of wrinkles it's okay sure you know it's like two thousand dollars a bottle or something that's probably it was probably something bougie like that so it was an early multi-level marketing scheme got it oh almost yeah well even worse it was probably for like someone like completely like unlicensed goop basically and there wasn't even a website for it but as soon as she reached into the medicine cabinet Mainly because, you know, we're already in that, like, late 2000s or, or late 90s, early 2000s mindset. 
I was like, it's going to be the mirror scare. It's going to be the mirror scare. It has scare. to be. And it wasn't the one I thought of where, like, someone well, You were going to see the dude, yeah. So this is more impressive. <laughs> I guess it's because he's mystic. He's able to, like, materialize the image on there. Because it's like, mm-hmm. oh, he's, like, drawing, you know, like, really fast. I like to think that he actually drew it really fast and then disappeared again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And did it also super stealthily so she wouldn't even notice, you know? You didn't hear the squeaky marks from his finger <laughs> on the on the mirror. Yeah. Right. And then that, that fucks her up. So then we cut to, like, I guess the floor below that. And Xavier's, like, going down the hallway, and he feels a drip, which that has to be a lot of water to go through the floor. So I'm not going to lie. I also felt like there was a passage of time there, and I don't know why, but I yeah. didn't feel like that was, like, like that had to be a few hours, I felt like. Not, yeah. like, not that was not a quick turnaround. Yeah, because, so back when I lived in Delaware, or my first or second apartment, we had washer dryers in our apartments and i was on the top floor because when i lived in those kind of apartments i always wanted to live like on the top floor so i had to deal with like noise from upstairs so it was one of those units that was like a washer and a dryer so you could just set everything at once so like at that time i had a day job so i would at the before work like throw my laundry and set everything and then by the time i got home everything's like done and just take it out something fucked up the one of the maintenance people didn't hook like the water hose in right so the wash had actually just been like pumping water into the apartment no all, all day like, the that's the worst day. possible thing that could happen yeah and because it was the tube or whatever yeah it never stopped because there was no signal you know to, like to because the wash it wasn't connected to the washer anymore after right. it broke off but it didn't leak into the people below me's apartment until i was almost home from work like i got the call as i was like you know on my way home and so, like, I just know from that experience, like, that was water more than a bathtub flowing directly onto my apartment floor. And it took, like, seven hours to get out. So you're right, like, especially in a nice house. Like, I was kind of in a shitty apartment, and that took a while. And so, like, in a nice house for it to, like, drip through yeah. to the next floor, like, that, she had been sitting there, like, all morning. That's what it felt like to me. It's like, it, <laughs> it was not like, oh, this wasn't like she had it happen, and five minutes later, it's going down. It's like, no, that was, mm-hmm. she, she's going through some major trauma right now. Yeah, About. and then Kitty finds her. Xavier and Jean run in to check on her. She's like not even verbal. So to once you get to your point, there must have been something else that happened. Even if they didn't, either they didn't like animate it for time, or they just expected us to like know. Because then the next thing, Jean like closes the mirror and just like take a look at this, and it, the mirror's broken, or maybe yeah. it looks like she punched it. I got the impression she punched it, but it, it maybe it was supposed to be like she slammed the mirror closed or something like that. You yeah, know? they kind of left it up to interpretation. Or, or she threw something at it, and that may have been one of those like standards and practices of like, hey, let's not throw something <laughs> at a mirror because that falls into the what would a stupid kid do thing. So. Yeah, yeah. For a second, I I was wondering if they were going to come back to it and like show that it was part of the mysticism, you know, like the right. whatever. But it, 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 I guess it really wasn't even super important. But then they cut over to the high school, and this is the scene you were talking about where Rogue is talking to Risty about Storm, and suspiciously, Risty's like, "Yeah, and you know about her claustrophobia." And Rogue's like, "How do you know about that?" Yeah, I feel like maybe not all the kids even know about that, you know. Yeah, it was a little. It was a little like I guess off putting. Like, I yeah. don't know. I wasn't expecting it. And then I think Risty's, or Mystique, I guess, logic is like, oh, I must have heard it in the lunchroom or something like that. It's like, but the kids, they're not even really talking about being mutants and in this institution, let alone their teacher's, you know, personal history and stuff. Because I'm not even sure if, if we're assuming that they don't know, that Risty doesn't, isn't supposed to know that they're mutants as Risty, how much are they supposed to know about a woman named Storm? Right. You know, like. <laughs> but we do know that Rogue has slipped and said too much information to her. So she would at least know who she is. And, yeah. you know, I, I would also interpret it as Risty kind of seems like she's in cool chick territory in the school because she got yeah. invited to Duncan's party and stuff like that. So, you know, maybe her it's. Accent. <laughs> yeah, purely from her accent. And, then, and nothing to do with her being hot or anything like that. Yeah. But yeah. A combination, a little both. But yeah, also. Kurt's a dumbass. Kurt could have said something. Spike's a dumbass. Spike could have said something. So yeah. So Rogue is still suspicious. She doesn't let it go. Or you could just see it in her face. Then outside the school, Scott and Jean are talking about what happened with Storm, and Kitty interrupts them, telling them like, "Did you hear what happened with Evan? He's emptying out his locker." And so then they all 
rush over to Evan to try to figure out what's going on, which is more fucked up. They didn't tell the other kids what was going on with Evan. Yeah, I feel like you should have given some sort of memo to the team on that one. Right. And before the team gets there, Kurt is already at Spike's locker, you know, telling him, like, aren't you even going to try to fight it? And, you know, Evan's already, like, pissed off. and He's, he's like, it, it doesn't matter. It's not even worth it. Nobody wants me here. Well, um, one, one part you did jump past was Aurora goes to Evan and sees him already packing and she's like so right. i guess you already know and he's like yeah go fuck yourself auntie Row. like what's yeah. he supposed to say there yeah she's like a little upset but i guess she's kind of i mean she's dealing with her own stuff too so like not everybody's like not in a good place and i i think i like that evan he cleans out his locker but he just throws his duffel bag away in the trash right <laughs> after he, like kurt he's like what it's not like we're even friends and kurt's like i thought we were friends like i guess i'll go fuck myself too that was you know that was one of those blind rages you know like yeah. I, I know adults like this let alone teenagers where like when one thing's wrong everything's wrong yeah and so i guess i gotta see that i mean i guess maybe it's something him and his aunt have in common it's like we you know one thing kind of makes everything like the worst perspective and back at the mansion there's i don't know what i forget what was happening but like cannonball pummels beasts are were they playing something so they were playing football there was a football that's that flew right. by and it's foggy so that's why he's caught off guard from it because right. the fog is still now constant and they finally name dropped him as cannonball they it took that long for cannonball's name to be said in the show yeah in real time when i was watching it i was like oh, i wonder if that's cannonball and beast is like hey cannonball I'm like thank you like, <laughs> <laughs> i literally wrote cannonball lands on him parentheses name drop finally yeah and i think this was the scene where i was like that's jubilee because yeah. she was standing behind him i was like yeah asian girl in a yellow jacket that got to be her and i don't think she says anything in this episode it, it was just like a suspicion and then like you said the next episode it gets confirmed they basically say that storm no showed for what they were interpreting as a fog session so they decided to improvise and beast is like all right well i guess i'm your teacher and then we've talked about like control like i know i've, I've said that phrase a bunch as being a big part of this series especially focusing on the fact that they are teenagers so it's like, cool, we're going to have a little exercise in self-restraint. And the, <laughs> you see the volleyball that pop up and it's like, oh, can you guys play without using your powers? Yeah, and they're in the danger room, which I love that the danger room has a volleyball net built into the floor. I'm not shocked by it, to right. be totally honest. I feel like of any spot that would have it, it absolutely makes sense there. It was funny because I was like, oh, what kind of training session is Beast going to do? And he essentially did the thing you do to like, you know, your toddler, nieces or nephews. Like, let's play who can be quiet the longest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it immediately because he even says like, "Oh, to have one training session where we don't go to the infirmary." And then immediately, <laughs> Sunspot spikes the ball into Berserker and just shit explodes. Yeah, because he's like, "You, there's no way you did it that hard without using your powers." Is Sunspot is part of his power super strength? I guess they just don't know each other. Uh, they, you know, they don't completely know each other yet. Maybe they're still manifesting powers or whatever. So. I mean, I'm pretty sure Roberto has always been just, like, in very good shape as just a yeah. young teenager. It's like, <laughs> may, I don't know. We the, the Berserker is the character that there's, like, no information outside of this show for me to even reference. So mm -hmm. it's like, I don't, I don't know. Is he just, like, all power, like, all electric power or whatever it is and just a total weakling and stuff like all that stuff is an unknown to me yeah. so maybe berserker is just a little bit of a bitch i don't know he's just unhinged <laughs> well i i wasn't even saying that i just mean he like he's just a wimp he can't fucking take a hit oh there you go that tracks yeah so they immediately use their powers and then beast just kind of like he, he walks away with like his head in his hands he's like well that was a nice try i guess we assume yeah. that all the kids went to the infirmary after that they're they all did, yeah they they're all horribly him. injured at this point <laughs> then that night we specifically see it's one 103 a.m this on the show bathroom. has done that a few times too where yeah. you notice that like it's not just like like it's not common times. They purposely pick weird times to put the alarm clocks at. Yeah, I guess this one to me was like they wanted to show like it was you know late enough that like everybody would be dead asleep. Agreed. I I just I'm more so pointing it out that they always pick a specific time. It's not just one a.m. or two a.m. Yeah, it's kind of like, like the like same as like like when you when you see a, a phone number show up in a, in a movie and it start. It's always obvious when it starts with five five five. 
you know? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's the movie designated numbers. Yeah. Or I recently saw the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, and I never played the game, so I didn't know anything about it. Is it? But this, like, every few scenes had specific times pop up, and I was like, oh, that's got to be part of the game. You know? It is. And then I was at a YouTube gaming event, and they had one of the YouTube exa- I think he's actually the head of gaming, Leo. Had never played Five Nights either, and they came up with this great setup where, A... He killed horror, children. Well, the horror gaming panel was being hosted by the head of mental health at YouTube, which was brilliant. And she acknowledged it. She's like, yes, I realize the head of mental health is moderating a panel <laughs> about horror games and how funny that is. And then Leo, he had to play the first night of Five Nights at Freddy's while answering Q&A from the gamers and yep. stuff. And that's when I saw it. I was like, ah, those are the times. So, yeah, those like the two times, like, click into that. If anybody listening, I'm sure it's probably random, but if anybody listening does happen to know if this like some of these times or numbers significant the, yeah yeah the code number we mentioned earlier had something or even if you're somehow tied to the show and you're like oh yeah that's like that animator's like kid's birthday or something i don't know like just be fun to know because things yeah. that specific on, it's like on the 37th of may i had or to the, I'm, I'm sorry i don't know i don't know what one of three would be but so storm walks out on the balcony because as we heard from steven it's a good place to think Yep. And she has a flashback. The show uh, loves their fucking balconies, man. Right. It, it he, Steven to, loved doing it. It does make me want to get a place with the balcony, because that seems like a nice, like, you can still be in your room, but not in your room kind of thing, you know? So she's, she has a flashback, and she's with the same tribe we saw earlier, and she's summoning rain for them. But it's, like, more than rain. It, like, refills a river. And then they they knock down the snake statues and yep. put up a statue of her. And the Hungan, he kind of seems a little miffed about it. Yeah, he grabs like a like a jewelry or some sort of embellishment that was hanging off of the the snake that she yeah. owed on whatever whatever yeah, the appropriate sure. terminology is. Yeah, or an idol or something, some yeah. sort of depiction. And that's when Storm kind of slowly comes out of like the daydream flashback, and there's like snakes at her feet, which is like even if you aren't afraid of snakes, that's a nightmare when you're not expecting. It, and there's a lot of them because they also looked a little bit like cobras to me, right? Like they had the frill. And yeah. I'm pretty sure, even if they're not cobras, if there are other snakes that have a frill, I'm pretty sure those are poison as fuck. Yeah, yeah, those are like Indiana Jones level of like... Sorry, snakes. venomous. Venomous, yeah, yeah. Yes, because venom bites you, poison, you bite it. I also, I'm sorry I forgot your name, and I'm sure you're not listening to this, although if you are, this is wild. I met a, a guy, guy at one of the Patreon events who, he like raises snakes and stuff, and he was showing me his hands. He has bite marks on his hands like I have tiny scratches from Lucy except that seems insane to me because these these when they snakes bite like they always break skin yes <laughs> like there's no like little scratch or nibble and he says he feels them in his muscle especially on the hands you know and stuff and he's like yeah they're just they're they're not trying to be malicious it's just sometimes when they don't see you coming and they sense the heat they just attack first and then think later and he says they let go as soon as they realize it's him because it's like any other pet they you know they know their owners and stuff but I'm like Man, that is a that is a type of person that is able to handle that, you know. It, all that came to my mind as an image for that was when in The Simpsons they talk about how Mo was a snake handler as his religion for for years, and that was what his family was. Yeah. It's just his hand covered in like bite marks and <laughs> band aids as a bartender. So yeah, that's funny. But yeah, so she wakes up to all the, the snakes, snake. and so she like does what any of us would do if we had the power she did. She like flies straight up. <laughs> I would have electrocuted the motherfuckers. Right. I would not have flown. I would have zapped shit. But that's just me. Yeah. I have and, anger issues. And as and when she gets that little bit of a higher angle, she's able to see that Evan is running away in the dead of night. And she starts to, like, go after him. I don't know why she stops flying, though. She, she also, she... like, yells for him to not run away. And it's like, why? Like, because right. your sister's going to be pissed at you? She's already probably pissed at you, if we're being yeah. honest. And he's probably ignoring her. We, uh, we're assuming either he doesn't hear or is ignoring her. Probably. Ignoring I got her. the vibe that I got the vibe that he didn't hear. Oh, okay. And I feel because I feel like he in in you know a few seconds from now when he sees her being chased. Oh, that's right. That he he's only seen her for the first time. And and Storm runs into someone that Marambo named Marambo. Yeah. And I wish they would have given him a little bit more screen time because we don't get a whole lot of story of what's going on there. But he no, kind of, he he's... he has three shots really. There is the shot at the very beginning where he's just kind of sitting there stoically. Uh -huh. You have him here, and then what we're going to get to in like the climactic scene. Yeah, and so he's he's basically he's trying to warn Storm like you can't leave these premises because they're going to come after you. Yeah, so, turn back. Yeah. It's not safe. 
now I'm not even sure. It might have been a combination of things where, like, people were physically near her, but not as close as she thought. Like, maybe they weren't on the grounds. Or they were summoning things and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And he, he's the one that actually name drops and says that the Hungan has come for you. Yes. And I originally, I, I wasn't familiar with the term at that time. So I was Same. like, is, is that the tribe? The, not the tribe, but like maybe like the... Um, A group within the tribe kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, like the, yeah, the I was I was curious something. about that too, and and so then we see Spike is hopping the gate to to leave, but then he looks back just in time to see Storm being chased, which is super sus. Which I, so I guess that means that they were on the grounds then, so maybe yeah. they weren't limited. They were chasing her, but once again, like she's just not flying, which would that would be my like I would have flown to go get Evan, I would have flown to get away from these yep <laughs> these people hunting me down and she but, tries to like zap them as they're like circling her mm -hmm. and it kind of reminded me of like you know the trope of like somebody in the woods and they're being circled by wolves but she oh, actually yeah. has a weapon which is her lightning but yeah. she can't get them and there's like there's a part of this mysticism of the the character in the tribe with the witch doctor that like she can't hit them she's literally oh, shooting yeah. lightning which shoots yeah. as fast as light you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and the way they animated it too, like you can't tell if it was just done for budgetary reasons or the effect, but it was kind of stuttering. So maybe it was supposed to be something a little bit more mystic, where like they were kind of not phasing, but they were being confusing on purpose. And then they trank her. Right. It's kind of it's kind of <laughs> like when you look at a image of like ninjas and stuff where they're mm. they're all moving at the speed, and it's it's the view of the person who's feeling confused rather than if you were looking at it from the outside. It's yeah. not as hard to follow kind of scenario. You remember one of those like earliest memes? It was just a photo of an empty street, and it was like the twentieth annual ninja parade. Yes, <laughs> I always remember that. That's a great meme. So Evan does. We a always got to be careful with the original memes because half of them are right. not okay anymore. Yo, our mutual friend Nathan Kessel, he had this great yeah, idea yeah. a few months ago yeah. where like I, because I'm the old YouTuber, show him like old YouTube content and stuff, and we react to it. And some of the stuff was fine. Like we were watching some Granny Potty Mouth vlogs, some David Dobrik vlogs and stuff. Like not the ones where David tried to kill people, but and then I showed him. I won't even mention which ones. I want to get in there. Yep. I showed him one of the earliest viral videos, and I had not thought about it in a while. And I still to this day don't think it's like that egregious. But he was like, he looks at me with the widest eyes, like we cannot put this on the internet. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I get what you're saying. I, yeah. There's a nuance to this that we that uh, doesn't translate to short form content. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Evan does the smart thing. He doesn't try to fight this you know craziness or whatever he he goes immediately to professor xavier and i'm shocked about that because i would have thought he would have just tried to spike them and then they would have disappeared or something like that oh, oh. yeah yeah and so yeah so xavier he wakes up xavier and they now know, know that storm man i almost turned to like a kiwi there for a second i was like nar is that australian they, they i think know. you're having a stroke in the middle of the podcast again okay full disclosure i was telling jc this before we start recording I, I i'm on like one of the largest music projects i've ever been hired for and today we had to do something that required me to use the, like a lot of percussion music theory and that was my worst subject in college and also i haven't used that specific level of complexity in like 20 years since i was 20 25 years whenever i was in college and it was great i'm super proud of what ended up coming out of it but i was like can we push this back an hour <laughs> i need to like eat and like reset my brain and still like not quite enough and i am nothing if not accommodating for the person who's responsible for the audio of this thing not sounding <laughs> like shit and that's why i mentioned earlier at the beginning of the episode i was like i am not physically tired physically i feel great for once but up here not a whole lot not Fine. a lot of pistons firing on the plus side i'm hosting next week's episode so you get yeah. to coast a little bit on that one sweet so we wake up with storm it was, seems like a metal box. that's a phrase yeah i think because if that's what are you feels like, are you like, per, are you projecting rod i mean the little but in this case not so the, the it it feels like it because like we don't know where she is. It's just like the inside of a metal box. We found out quickly it's like a shipping container. Yeah, on a freighter. But, but also, you know, once again, anybody that knows Storm is like, oh shit, like you know, she can't be in there. Be you okay? And we get the sense, or I got the sense that even though the team gets there that night, it feels like an extended amount of time because the Hungan says that the, he broke her spirit. Right, because she wakes up, she can zap, she kind of shuts down. And that's when the Hungan arrives and uses his staff, which has like literally sucks the spirit out of her mouth. I need to know more that to your point before, like there's a lot of story missing. I need to know what that is. 
I think like, I think in hindsight, having the context that Hungen has to do with Witch Doctor, mm-hmm. that filled in that blank for me. Okay, well, because I was at the time, I was like, does that mean it's just her powers? Because that's what he wanted. Is that like her actual soul? But then later, he's like controlling her. So it's like, is it I, just like a yeah? Tablet? I interpreted it. Her soul allows him to control the body. Okay, yeah. yeah. So it's like the like the avatar kind of like you know puppetry or whatever. Blue people, the airbenders. Or, yes. Yeah. Oh no, I mean just in the general sense. Then we see Wolverine arrive on his motorcycle, uh, where he has literally sniffed out Storm. Okay. Real quick, did you watch Gargoyles back in the day? Oh yeah. I'm actually playing the. Or I say playing. I bought the remastered Gargoyles game for Switch. Okay. The helmet he has reminds me of the logo from the pack. I could see that. Like I, yeah. I don't remember which one because I, I, they're not really referenced in detail in the current comics which are coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of the guys that looks like the mask or the logo that was on the chest was his helmet face. I could to see me. that. Yeah, that, yeah. Because it, it was also I know that they were trying to like match Wolverine's like mask style, which is, is kind of funny because underneath the helmet his mask just was still the same. Shape, whatever. Yeah, it popped <laughs> back up. Yeah. Yeah. But Sorry, yeah, I just had to throw that out there because it's like, yeah, this whole show is nostalgia crack anyway. Yeah, so it's, it's great. And so he like literally sniffs out Storm. And so he radios back to everybody where he is. And he's like, oh, look, it's a good thing I don't wait. And, and he, I guess there's more credibility to what other people are saying about maybe they're in a little bit of a relationship or something. Yeah. I mean, I know everybody wants to help, but he's like a little bit more. Yeah, fuck it. And, I'm not I'm not waiting. I'm not letting this person I, I'm intimately involved with get yeah. hurt. So. And then he runs into Marambo yep. and almost kills him. <laughs> they name drop the ship, the Inyoka, I think is how it's pronounced. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't catch that. Which I, I didn't find anything else relating to that. So I I don't know if that's just a name or something like that. But yeah. they're very big in this show about giving proper names to people and stuff that don't end up coming back in some degree. Like. Right. Like all those girls who are assholes to Kitty in her debut episode, like fucking Stacy, whoever the fuck Stacy is. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I guess it was just the style for it. Somebody that was mean to one of the writers. Yeah. And then Marambo shares, and this is where we got the confirmation that the village turned against Hungan ten years ago, mm-hmm. and that's why he is after Stork. So this is kind of like the the Morlock story brought right. to like Storm's origin. In this sense, you know, because like in the 92 oh, series, yeah, yeah. Like, it's kind of the inverse of it. Yeah. Yeah. Like Storm had like unwittingly become a leader of the Morlock, the leader of the Morlocks. And this one, we don't know why she left, but she became the leader and has like not been there in 10 years. And so, yeah, I mean, kind of besides, besides him being kind of evil, he probably should have been the leader if she hasn't been around in a decade. So. Especially if she got, she made everybody like, you know, praise her probably because mm-hmm. she was, you know, helping out, making sure that there was water in all important stuff that these people needed, and then just left. And he's probably like, wait, so you came, got (laughs) control, and then you bounced? Well, I guess I'm just fucked for a decade until I could slowly get these people back on my side. Until I meet Mystique, who's a British teenager now. Yep. Yeah, they tell him about, like, her spirit getting stolen. Everybody just accepts it. And, and yeah, where where she is, they they go to that ship and try try to find her. But they get attacked. This is just a big scene of everyone using their powers in the most optimal way against all these and they split. Warriors. They split into groups of two. That mm-hmm. uh, that that was like, and they've done this a little bit. They kind of showed it in the the Evan the, or no, it was Nightcrawler fucking up episode yeah, yeah. when he wasn't there for Rogue when she got shot in the back in the danger room. But you get Wolverine and Spike as a duo, Kitty and Sky as a duo, and then Nightcrawler and Rogue together. And Nightcrawler almost gets Rogue killed. Again. No, no, no. No, it was Evan last time. Sorry. Was it Evan last time, too? It was Evan okay, last time. Okay, my bad. Yeah, my bad. Nightcrawler got to the Switch. Oh, yeah, sure, right. Evan Sorry. Evan was late, and then yep. they didn't get Rogue. Maybe that's why they switched. You're like, okay, I guess he has been fucking up for a bit. Yeah, you're not in charge of Rogue anymore. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, obviously, now Kurt is not in charge of Rogue either, or right. working alongside oh. Rogue, because he teleports out of the way, and she almost gets speared. Now I wonder if that's why Nightcrawler is in this situation he's in in the next episode. We'll it, get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, lots of lots of fighting, and these warriors actually put up a good fight, right? For being against like super powered, you know. I teenagers. love how Kitty used her power though. She actually did the whole thing of phasing through something and then knocking the person and stuff like that. Yeah, because like she was she, being strangled, right? And then phase through it. Yeah, and she got grabbed by a whip. He pulls the whip in, realizes she's not there anymore, and then she pops through like a box or something, and then yeah. whacks the dude. So. 
I honestly don't remember the rest of the fighting stuff, but it was really cool. I mean, like I said, Rogue almost died, so yeah. yeah. Then they get to board the ship, and they don't even have to look for Storm. Storm just attacks Wolverine specifically, because he's the first one there. And that's when I was like, okay, I guess it's not just stealing her powers. He's literally, like, controlling her. her. It's pretty short-lived, though. So Spike, circling back to the beginning of the episode, has, even though he's never done it successfully before, successfully uses sound to locate the Hungan. Right, and he has a flashback to earlier with her saying, I'm in your hands. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Which we've, we've seen them do a few times now. It happened in the Scott and Jean episode when she was having her power surge scenario mm -hmm. where something earlier does get said and brought back and stuff. So there is a little bit of symmetry with, with how this is being used in this series. So this is kind of like, you know, the mom's adrenaline when their kid's stuck under a car or something, right? It's, I guess it's like the moment, you know, like she's like, like lift the car or whatever, you know, whatever. Like, so he, he steps up to the occasion and locates the Hungan and, and he, he's throws a spike and shatters that crystal that um, dude did a terrible job of keeping that safe right if it's that fragile i also good call on evan of either knowing or getting lucky that that's how that worked right <laughs> and just didn't kill storm or something oh yeah imagine if that just released her spirit into the atmosphere yeah, right. <laughs> literally, literally kills her and causes a climactic storm right oh yeah oh, imagine man, I think about that yeah this is like a free it's a free it's freed spirit that's also the last thing that happened was it was in like a terrified or bad mood that's great that's we get haunted places yep and then the storm uses a tornado and blasts the hungan away and i was like is he dead and then we get the reveal oh they all just kind of like vanished into the mist and that's where i was also like were any of them real or were they, like, summoned? Like, I was actually yeah. ambiguous to me on that part. Yeah, because yeah, he gets sucked up into, like, a, well, a funnel cloud, like, that Stormy commented on past episodes. So I didn't know if he was actually there, and then the rest weren't, because they were able to fight him. Well, I think they were fighting them, too. I don't know. I think, at the very least, he was there, and there's mm -hmm. a little bit of ambigu ambiguity. That's almost a word. <laughs> ambiguity that others may or may not have been part of the tribe. The only reason I think they were is because of Marambo mentioning that the others were coming. So. Yeah, yeah. So she passes out, which I think this is the first time we've seen her do that in Evolution. It happened a lot in 92. Did and... she pass out in the Rogue debut episode, maybe? Maybe, I can't remember. When she was falling from the sky from being, like, overcharged or something? Oh, that, yeah. That maybe. Might have been the other one. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, this one is stood out to me, though, no. like the iconography of it, though, because Spike catches her, so it's like... Yeah. It feels like one of the 92 moments where she overexerts herself in the middle of the sky and then one of the, the, the other team members has to catch her. And then we fast forward to, I guess, the next day where Spike's mother is there talking to Storm and Evan's like, all right, I'm ready to, ready to leave. And Storm is like, well, you saved my life, so we're even. So I just talked to your mom into like letting you stay. And his mom's not upset about having to make that trip. I was going to say, <laughs> why didn't she call her sister and just say, hey, we changed our mind. You don't yeah. need to drive down from upstate to the school. Yeah. I guess her sister's so maybe it was like a little wine time or something. I don't know. Yeah. I <laughs> I hope Storm was at least courteous enough to give the mom the option. And then the mom said, I'm going to come down anyway and see you guys. I hope yeah, that's yeah. the case. But then Evan is like all excited. He like starts skating through the mansion and stuff. And I'm just like. It's not the way to prove you're responsible to skateboard through the whole base of the mansion. Right. That was the extreme two thousand Y two K way. Yeah. But then <laughs> he bumps into the, the, the main team and he's like, Yeah, I got to stay and then he starts to get like all cocky about, you know, saving the day and stopping the shaman and it's just like Let's shut up while you're ahead, dude. Yeah, yeah, they they, they don't care. That's yeah. how you know they're friends. It's that this family. <laughs> Well, and it's also like, of all the people to not be impressed by what you're doing, it's all the other people with superpowers. Yeah, that also had to fight by your side. Yeah, and this is the first one where you've been, like, the one who won the battle, really. Like, you don't... Yeah. You, you're you not the MVP most times. This is not yeah. your basketball team, so... Yeah, yeah. and then that was the... That's, this is one of the happier endings. Yeah, this was a feel-good one. I, li I like any story with Storm in it. This is kind of concreting. I'm still not as in love as I was with the 92 Storm, but... This one is great. It's it's not Halle Berry, and that's already like half the battle. I I would say for you, that's probably like 80 percent of the battle, and maybe all of it. So, 
What's interesting to me is this was tied with Adrift as being the lowest rated episode of the series. I could kind of see that because of what we were talking about, how much stuff felt like it was left out. Yeah. And then how that third act barely climaxed. You know, it like they didn't live in the conflict very long. If anything, the episode is more about Evan being a problem at school than Storm through all her stuff. You know, I thought it was. I thought it was fine. I I I will say this is probably not one of those episodes where I'm going to remember any moments from it. And I think between Adrift, African Storm, and then the next episode, because there is no big bad of the episode that's like a known character, it's a little forgettable. And skip to robot voice. One hour, three minutes, and 22 seconds. To avoid one more Captain Marvel spoiler, I just didn't like the villain in Captain Marvel. Because yeah. there was nothing about them I cared about. Like yeah, she, she, she wasn't great. She was retconned as a character that I should care about because they were there when Carol was destroying a bunch of shit. Mm-hmm. But it's like, it's just another accuser. She was essentially just like a gender swap Ronin. Yeah. Exact same motivation and everything. If anything, I'd, I forget if I mentioned to you or another the friend, crap. but like it felt like we were missing a second movie about you. The Civil you War. texted me about that. Yeah. I feel like the. That, that scene that she has revealed that she has like PTSD over feels like it was the climax of a second movie or something, you know? Well, like, and we were supposed to see like the whole thing leading up to the Civil War. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. And she, she's a, the, that, the woman who played the, the villain was a great actor. I think she's Tom Hiddleston's wife. Yeah, because they're the first two people to have something drop on the same day for them within Marvel. That's hilarious. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, they had his finale and her movie on the same day. Wow, what what is that conversation like at home? Because he had, like, a masterpiece of an ending, and she was, like, the worst part of an okay movie. It's probably, I love you, let's not talk about our show. <laughs> yeah. You want some more wine? <laughs> let's go to Paris. Just, like, cool to get some of Storm's background, I think, without the Shadow King involvement, at least in this portion of it. It's just less identifiable of to of being something I really am gonna care deeply about. But it wasn't bad. It was just it was fine. It was actually very much like the Marvels. Yeah, and the only way, I think the only way that maybe some things would be more memorable is if like the Hungin comes back, and then he's just kind of yeah. like you know he's kind of like Spike. You know he's like maybe newer for the show, but then is a little bit more reoccurring or something. Yeah, I and I the only reason I'm gonna say I doubt that happens is I think I read in somewhere that. Every season has a Wolverine Origins episode, mm-hmm. but the other characters do not get origin episodes in every season. I think they only get one origin episode okay. each. Well, I'm so, not even saying like in an origin, just like he it sets him up to be more of a villain than yeah, just a totally. storm or something, you know, or whatever. But I don't know. Like we'll see. We're like you know, we always say we're watching this in real time, so have yep. no idea what's coming up besides the next episode. So thanks for joining us. If you have any thoughts, make sure to drop them into the comments for either the YouTube upload or official Instagram post for this episode. If you like what you heard, we'd appreciate a rating on the podcast app you're choosing. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and CastBox. I think that's actually formally dead now. Like, I, I, lo- I looked at the analytics, and CastBox is not listed there, so I, I think it might have died. Okay, bye, CastBox. <laughs>